Hi, welcome to another episode of the Mike Page Doodle Club. I'm Mike Page, and today we are going to draw an old school bicycle. So grab some pens, pencil, marker, whatever you want to use, and some paper, and let's get right to it. Park Street Books is proud to sponsor the Mike Page Doodle Club. Find them locally at 504 Main Street, Medfield, Mass. Open Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Or visit parkstreetbooks.com. No matter where you are, that's parkstreetbooks.com. So I'm going to start drawing like an old Schwinn bike. Um, and to start with that, I'm going to make a curving line up. This will be the top tube of the bike frame. And then I think to kind of make it easier to visualize everything, I'm going to go ahead and make the next line as well. So we're going to curve down and around to that. This is a very odd shape right here. And inside of this, we'll make a line right about here that's going to join back. And then the main post for where the seat will be is going to come up here. So here we have kind of the basics of our bike frame. The front wheel will be over here. Back wheel will be back here. Um, so this right here will be where our, the center of our back wheel is. And we want that wheel to be about as tall as where the seat post meets the top tube. And then the trick is to make it a nice circle with that as your center. Suppose I could have drawn this wheel first and then put a dot right at where I thought the middle was would have been a little bit easier. Uh, but I didn't think to do that. I started with the frame. There we go. That's about the shape that we'll want. Uh, next, to get that classic uh, Schwinn Stingray look, we're going to want a fender on the rear tire. Keep you from getting mud on your clothes. And that'll come around to about there. And then it's going to be a banana seat bike. Um, sometimes called a muscle bike, sometimes called a spider. These bikes had a bunch of different names. Sometimes they're even called choppers. Uh, and then we're going to have a bar coming up at the back to make the sissy bar where your sister holds on to if she's riding behind you. Now, uh, these bars can come in a bunch of different sizes. The standard is short like that, but the really cool ones went really high. So I'm gonna go ahead and make, since we're doing an old school bike, let's do something that you don't really see anymore, and that's a really high sissy bar. Um, and then it'll bend kind of at the top and then we're just going to come back parallel to everything that we already have. So we're just coming right back down. Like that. And then this would join in on the back side of, of the hub of that wheel, like that. Now we're going to want the uh, what is this, the down tube, I believe, where the handlebars connect. Um, and then we're going to make the fork on the front. And I'm going to have this be a raked bike uh, where the fork kind of kicks out a bit. And I think I'm going to have it be one of the old bicycles where the front wheel is smaller. Um, that's something you really don't see much anymore, but I always thought they were pretty cool. Your bike now probably has a, a 
a wheel that's like 29 inches if you're relatively tall, 24 to 29 inches. Uh, these bikes usually had tires that were like 19 or 20 inches. So much, much smaller wheels. Um, and then <clears throat> for the pedals, this is going to be where the pedal is. So I'm going to put a circle right where the seat tube comes down and meets the frame. I'm going to put a few circles going around and then it's going to come across to the back here. I'll put another small circle back here and then we're just going to connect all this. This will be the chain that's con controlling the bike, making it move. And then for it to be a Schwinn, it's, it's going to have a little piece of metal covering this up, chain guard. So I'm just drawing this, but uh, I actually really want to be coloring this in when I'm done uh, because Schwinn's usually came in some really cool colors back in the 60s really vibrant orange or blue, red, green. Um, and then to make this a little more of an actual bike, I'm going to make all of this framework two lines rather than just one. So I just kind of left it as a skeleton of, of where all the frame is. And now I'm going to make it so that it's an actual frame. And so you're just connecting all of this together. My best friend growing up, his name was Jared, and he and I used to have skid mark contest down his driveway. He had a really steep driveway and we used to pedal up to the top of his driveway and get going as fast down that hill as we could. These old bikes have coaster brakes where you pedal backwards to to engage the brakes. So we'd get going as fast as we could and then slam on the brakes at the bottom of the hill and see who could leave the longer skid mark down the driveway. That was like one of my favorite things to do as a kid. So drawing this old bike is kind of uh, reminding me of all those times doing that with Jared. His parents didn't like it when we did it. So sometimes we'd do it when they weren't around. Um, and then uh, this sissy bar is supporting the back end of the seat. Um, and then these bikes typically had, uh, the really cool ones have ape hanger handlebars and they're called that because when you're holding onto them, your hands are way up here at your head and you look like an ape. So we're gonna come up a little bit more, kick that handlebar line forward a little bit, and then we're going to come up and the higher you go, the, the crazier your ape hangers will be, the more street cred you'll have on your in your neighborhood. So I'm going to come up like this, and then it's going to come out like that. If you're a young kid watching this, uh, you may never have seen an old bike like this. Um, but they were pretty cool. Sometimes the seat was even like glitter vinyl. Totally ridiculous. Um, Sometimes the paint was metal flake paint where it's real uh, glittery and sparkly. These were definitely uh, designed to catch your eye and make your friends jealous. Um, and then for the handlebar, we're going to make 
kind of a small letter C right there for the grip. And then continue the line back. So that's one handle. The other one we're going to make over here a little bit more. And we'll have it coming down like that. And then again, just another parallel line. Bikes are tricky to draw, um, but pretty much every line that you're making, you're going to just do it again, make a second one. Um, I made this corner a little too sharp. It should have been a bit more rounded. That's all right. Something kind of like that. Then I'm just going to come back in, kind of finish up. So I'm going to fix this fender up. In my head, I'm totally having a skid mark contest right now. Just wanted to get going as fast as you possibly could. Wait till the last second and slam on the brakes and hope Jared's mom didn't yell out the window at you. His parents did not like all the skid marks on the driveway. But Jared and I thought it was pretty cool. Um, so again, everything's just parallel lines. So now to make this tire tube, um, I just followed along the first line, but just inside of that. And then I'm just going to scribble this in to make the tire black. Some of the old Schwinn's even had white wall tires, which is where there's a white side to the tire. Um, again, just designed to catch your eye and make your friends jealous of your cool bike. There's a while there in the 50s and 60s that bike design was really trying to copy um, what was happening with cars and also what was happening with motorcycles um, and just kind of give kids a taste of that design style and let them feel like they had something that grown-ups had. Uh, then I'm gonna put a slight shadow right underneath it. Uh, and we'll make some spokes. Spokes are always weird to draw, but I think they usually kind of, it's like random, but not at the same time. A lot of times there will be two going pretty parallel to each other from the hub of the wheel. So something kind of like that. Um, but then they're heading in different directions. And then I'll also throw some in going into other spots. There's probably a science to how they're done, but I'm not sure exactly what that science is. Um, and then I'm just going to shade this in real quick. Again, I'd really like to be actually coloring this in. Um, because these old Schwinn's had some really cool colors. If you're sitting at home and you've got markers nearby, I would make all of this a really bright color if I were you. Uh, you can even leave some spots that are uh, reflected. So as if, you, if you're using like a skinny marker, if you just kind of kick it out along these spots, you'll end up with areas that aren't quite um, filled in and it will look like a reflection on the bike which will make it look like it's really catching the sun. You know what I forgot is a fender on the front wheel so I'm going to add that really quick before we wrap up and sometimes I mentioned that um, these old bikes were trying to copy what was happening with cars and motorcycles sometimes these old bikes even had a headlight on the front to really make you look official so maybe we'll add that real quick. That's basically just a stretched out letter C. 
with a smushed zero or O attached to it. And then I'm just going to shade the bottom real quick, kind of like that. And there is our old school Schwinn. I hope you enjoyed following along and tune in again next time when we'll be drawing some uh, tattoo banners. Thanks for watching. Park Street Books is proud to sponsor the Mike Page Doodle Club. Park Street Books is an independent children's book and toy store. With nothing electronic in the store, Park Street Books encourages kids to read, play, and unplug. Find them locally at 504 Main Street, Medfield, Mass. Open Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Or visit parkstreetbooks.com no matter where you are. That's parkstreetbooks.com.